Okay, that's all for transport layer. Now let's look at the network layer. Actually, network layer can set the connection between the process on host. So for example, here is the sender, here is the receiver. So they can establish the connection from the process in the sender through the routers until the process in the receiver. And uh, there are two key functions in network layer. One is data forwarding. So every router needs to forward the data packet from one incoming link to the correct outgoing link. And another function for the network layer is to calculate the route routing. For example, this is the source, this is destination. We have one path, we have another path, so the routers can work together to find out a best path and transmit the packet uh, along this best path. So that is means routing. So network layer protocols include the internet protocol version 4, version 6, and uh, ICMP and also IGMP. Let's look at the detailed working process of a network layer protocol. Actually, first they will do the packet encapsulation and decapsulation. Actually, every layer will do that, do this function. They will put the payload into a packet by adding some header and tail. But the most important function of network layer protocol is the packet forwarding. So first, for each router, they will using some routing protocols to calculate uh, a, correct, a correct route. For example, they will calculate the result and put it in a routing table. The routing table uh, looks like this. This is the destination IP. And this is the corresponding outgoing interface. So for example, if we look at the router one for a mass for a packet whose destination belongs to the network A, it will tell you that, okay, the router one should forward this packet with this destination IP to this outgoing interface. So this packet should forward from this outgoing interface. And similarly, for this router, they will check its routing table and find that this packet with the destination IP should go from this link and go through this link and finally can arrive the destination. So this function check the outgoing interface and forward the packet to the interface means packet forwarding. This is the most important function in network layer protocol. Okay, now let's look at the data link layer. In data link layer, the message are in unit of frame. Okay, you may notice that at different layer, they call, they have different name. So this is segment, this is datagram, and this is frame. Okay, so the uh, data link layer actually locate between the network layer and physical layer, and they provide service for protocols uh, such as. Uh, PCP, uh, IP and IPv6 at the network layer. They provide service. So what kind of service? Actually, they can uh, provide the intra-segment communication. And they can also provide the uh, function of data link layer. For example, they can do the framing. They can cut a long packet into several small frames. And they can give the physical address for each uh, packet, and they can do some basic error control. Typical data link layer protocols include Ethernet, PPPoE, and also PPP. So for link layer, one important concept is the MAC address. Okay? And a typical link layer protocol is Ethernet. The Ethernet actually is the uh, wired local area network. So in the Ethernet, the computers can be connected with each other using the switch and finally to a router to connect to the internet. So in such a network, um, this is a broadcasting network. By using the Ethernet, 
any packet from the host can be broadcasted to the other hosts. And in Ethernet, you need to know that uh, every node will have not only an IP address, the IP address is allocated from the network layer. And in link layer, we have another address. We call it the MAC address, the media access control address. And the MAC address actually uh, cannot be changed for a device. The MAC address of a device actually is allocated uh, and uh, identified when this network interface card or when this device manufactured. After that, this MAC address cannot be changed. In contrast, the IP address can be changed. Okay, In which network the IP address can be changed to the uh, IP of this network. So you can think of the uh, MAC address as your ID uh, number and you, the IP address to be your postal address or postal number. And a device that worked at, works at the data link layer will be the switch. As there are two address, IP address and MAC address for one devices. So there is the natural question for a device. If we have already know its IP address, how do we know its MAC address? So to solve this problem, actually, uh, we usually use this protocol called uh, address Resolu resolution protocol ARP. ARP can discover the MAC address for a given IP address. So if there is a computer host A, he wants to transmit a packet uh, to host B, but he only know the IP address of post host B. He wants to know the MAC address because he needs to put the MAC address into the packet uh, in the domain of the header. Then how can it know the MAC address? Actually, they can use this ARP request to ask for the MAC address of this IP. And then if host B can receive this message, he can reply with an ARP reply and write his own MAC address into this reply message, then host A can know, oh yeah, for this IP address, the MAC corresponding MAC address is like this. So this is the uh, overall uh, protocol, overall process for ARP uh, protocol. But in detail, actually the whole process are divided into several uh, stage. So the first stage is that if uh, previously, originally, the host one have no uh, items in its ARP table, actually every device will maintain an ARP table, but originally it is empty. So if we use this command to check, yeah, you can see that it's empty. Then uh, he should request for the MAC address of this IP. Then he should send out a message so this message actually uh, is an ARP request. In ARP request, there are four, do four domains, uh, which is MAC1, uh, IP1, the, the IP and MAC of the sender, and also the IP and MAC of the receiver. But as he, don't know, he doesn't know the MAC address of the receiver, so here they uh, simply write all zero here. And we need to add the um, MAC header. So for MAC header, uh, they said that it is a broadcasting package. So there is a broadcasting all one address written in the header. So this is the ARP request message. Then the ARP request message are sent, sent out. Then if it reaches a switch, the switch should broadcast this message to all its connected hosts. And then, uh, the host two will receive this request. Then when, when host two receive the request, it will first check whether this request is for me. So they compare the destination IP address in this ARP uh, request message with its own IP address. If they find that, yeah, it's for me, then I should uh, reply with a message. 
And before reply with message, he should also add the uh, match of host one into his ARB address table. So he will know that corresponding to this IP address, the MAC address is this one. So he will add this uh, entry into the ARP table and then send back this ARP reply. So in this ARP reply, he will add his MAC address into this ARP message. Then uh, the switch no longer broadcast this ARP reply because for this switch, he has already known for this IP, the corresponding MAC address is here. So he, he can simply forward this message to host one. And then host one, uh, after receive message, will finally add the corresponding relationship into its ARP table so that after this message, he know that whenever he want to transmit packet to this IP address, he can add the corresponding MAC address into the header. So that's all for the total uh, ARP protocol implementation. So simply, um, you need to know that they should send a request and receive a response or reply. And every device will maintain an ARP table in its own memory.